Cool. Now we are recording as well. So yes, today I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about personal psychology and marketing and how advertising leverages the natural human wants and needs to sell us things. Ooh. <laughs> I think it's something we all know, but yet we don't necessarily think about. Um, or maybe we do. I mean, if you're into the marketing, you're probably thinking about it all the time. Uh, it's part of what makes me completely lose my mind sometimes walking through the grocery store aisles when I look at the marketing on certain things. Um, but it's, it's all very interesting. Uh, one that sets me off currently is a, a specific type of uh, water sold in the water aisles. Uh, it's just called like Bob's Rainwater. And it's, on the can, it literally says ingredients is rainwater or just rain. It's just, it's crazy. But it plays into the human psychology of these things and how we want to do stuff. Oh, is that my first slide? It is. So what, what makes people move? Uh, we've talked, touched on this before and talked about the emotions uh, that set, set us up to do things. Uh, emotions such as validation, excitement, or possibly greed. Uh, it's their, their cousins, you could call it security and safety are cousins, and then purpose. Uh, purpose is one that we'll, we're going to touch on here as well in a few minutes, because we're going to look at some examples and have, just have some conversation about it. Um, so with that, I'm not going to keep blabbing. That is not a link, right? It is a link. Yeah. So in case you needed to check, I'll share this, these slides again. But uh, I grabbed these from one of our older trainings, talking about the emotions. All right. So excitement and security, I felt were kind of easy to understand. Uh, so the validation of purpose, we gave a little bit more definition here. Validation, kind of looking for the recognition or the affirmation. Um, of yourself or the feelings and the opinions that you hold and that because you hold them you want somebody else to kind of agree with you and that set for most people it makes them feel better and they feel more valid as it says here uh, or worthwhile so acknowledging another person's emotions thoughts experience and values and beliefs and the purpose again brings you to a higher level of what's happening some people relate it to the spiritual desire to impact the world uh, in a positive way and your values and your beliefs and everything goes into that. Um, and I, one of the things we'll, we'll, that I do want to talk about here towards the end is uh, part of building the brand, right? As you're building a brand, whether you're doing it for yourself, for your clients, but just in your marketing and your copy, um, what is the purpose behind your brand, right? Uh, and there's, Something new I, I stumbled upon recently at a mastermind event that I want to dive more into so I can come back and, and teach more of it, which is the uh, psychological archetype of the brand. It's very interesting. I found it interesting. Hopefully you guys will as well once we talk more about it. But uh, it, it kind of, it's what is the overall feel of the brand and what does it want to be associated with? And then that way that leads into these pieces of like the 10 reasons people buy that we'll talk more about also in a few minutes, right? Just like now. So one to just kind of run through these pieces that we have talked about so then we can take a look at some of the examples and then just have some conversations about them. So 10 reasons people buy, uh, these top ones are usually the most common and easiest to see. People wanna save money or make money, save time, escape mental or physical pain, avoid effort. And I did my best to overlay those emotional qualities with each one of these. Um, so we can see saving money, uh, saving time, both fit into safety and security, make money, more of an excitement, uh, potentially greed, depending on how you are, uh, and safety, security for the others, escape mental, physical pain, and avoiding effort. I'll stop just for a second so and get feedback from, from you guys. If does, does this make sense? Is there any comments or questions you have about this particular first piece we're talking about. I don't even know where the comments are. I should bring up the chat so I can pay attention to that. What about the want to accomplish things, Jimmy asks in the chat. Yeah, I think the want to accomplish things fits into uh, most likely the purpose section. Um, but again, it, it could possibly depend on what is the thing they want to accomplish. And then you can you can uh, position it into any of these different categories. 
but I would imagine for most people, if they want to accomplish a thing, it has something to do with purpose or validation. So Rob says, makes sense, just feels, just feels hard to think about all these things while writing copy. Yes, I totally get that. In fact, uh, yesterday afternoon, Bryce was tasked with creating uh, a new lead magnet that we could uh, use for some of this AI work that we can start promoting now in advance of the workshop next week, but probably also use it afterward as well. And uh, Bryce, you worked on it for a little while and then you came back to me and you said, what? Do you remember your comment? I don't remember my exact comment, but I'm sure I was confused or lost. Well, you, you done oh, I do remember it. now. I said yeah. copywriting is hard. Yeah. <laughs> he walks I back after that. work and he's like, copywriting is hard, man. <laughs> I started laughing. Two uh, hours of typing and it gets to you. Yeah. So, uh, and Jay agrees with Rob here also. Yeah, same. It's, it is a lot to think about when you're writing. So there's- Can I ask two... you a quick question? Sorry, go yeah. ahead. Why don't you ask, go ahead, why you... I feel like you're about to answer it. I was gonna ask you a question, but then you're about to answer it. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. So what I was gonna say is there's there's kind of two ways um, you deal with all the all this stuff while you're writing. One is you plan it out ahead of time, right? You decide ahead of time what do you want, like what is, what is the feel and the desired outcomes of of the thing you want to write about, and that's one way to do it. And that's uh, really ideally, especially when just getting started. That's ideally what you should do you should just like planning out a campaign for media buyers right they have to know what's the campaign objective what type of uh, uh, audience they're going to run to what type of ad creatives they're going to use right so this is really it's it's very very similar you know you have to decide well what is again you always want to start with what's the desired result i want and then you can kind of work backwards from there and you can consider what's the feel and what's the motivation um, and then the other one is after you do it so much, uh, you sometimes you just start to understand the patterns and see it. And so when somebody asks, hey, can you create something for whatever XYZ product? And then you just kind of, your brain kicks in and you just start putting it together. But this whole uh, presentation today was actually kind of inspired for me by a presentation I saw again at the same mastermind recently, where it was more about split testing uh, by way of using these different emotional qualities. Yeah, uh, which method do I use, Rob? Uh, I use a little of both. It just kind of depends on what I'm doing, uh, how well I, actually, let me say it this way. It depends on how well I know the thing that I'm writing about or how well I know the audience that I'm writing for. Um, when we first started launching all the Honeycomb webinar stuff and the affiliates, and when we did the, the launch with Ben Cummings, I had written some stuff for the month previous, that event, uh, and it was, it was okay. Uh, and then Ben wrote stuff and everybody was like, my mind is blown. Ben is such an amazing person. And uh, two things about that that I thought were funny. One, the first email that came out that everybody's like, he's such an amazing copywriter. Look at that email. Uh, he said it took him all day to write it. <laughs> so like back to, back to Bryce's point, it's not easy all the time. It, it, it does take time to craft stuff. Um, and the other part is Ben intimately knows that audience so well. So he, he can just sit down and think about what, you know, what are all the problems that the people in my audience are in this, that would be interested in this? What are they going to need to know so I can hit those topics? And for me, I have to go out and I have to learn about the audience and learn what the problems are. And then I have to do all that research first. So hopefully that helps. So uh, the second set of five, again, this is a little bit more, a little bit more odd, a little less used in common practice. Uh, but still um, very important, right? So getting more comfort, achieving greater cleanliness or hygiene, attaining better health, gaining praise, feeling more love and increased social status. Uh, again, and we can see how I, I did my best to overlay the emotions along with each of these. So just something to give you new ideas to play with, right? And so part of the split testing concept that was talked about in the event was using the four, these four emotions 
uh, and just like uh, A/B testing two of them at a time. Right, so maybe you take the exact you take the exact same product to the exact same audience, but you create one headline or one ad angle around, say, safety and security, and one around validation, and you just see which one uh, has a better pull rate, which one has a higher click through rate, or whichever metric you're using, and then you go from there. And then once you you find a winner of those two, then you'll let's say the safety and security one. Then you pair the safety and security with excitement and greed, and you see which one of those two pulls more. All right. And so that's the classic uh, concept of creating um, what's known as a control, which is one marketing asset that's used over and over and over again, um, and then having a variation. So the control, if it's always running and it's always generating the, the metrics that you want, you just leave it alone and you let it run. If it's not hitting those parts or you have a control that's doing really well, but then you want to test new variations against it to, to try to get even better metrics to, to become the new control item. Does that make sense? Yes, Jay, Jay says yes. Yeah, cool. Oop, too far. All right, let's check out some magazine examples. Oh, if I can get there correctly. Uh, and, and for for me, this part, I brought up some magazine examples because I I received a new magazine at, at the house the other day in the mail. And as I was flipping through it and just started to look at the, you know, the print ads and just the image ads of, by themselves, um, which is something I don't do enough probably. And maybe I don't know what you guys do, but because we're in the digital section all the time and we're constantly seeing online images and we have little GIFs and videos and everything going. Uh, it's easy to kind of forget all the qualities and work that goes into just a simple image ad. But since we do have a ton of image ads, uh, especially for Amazon and Shopify and things, but and, and even just regular Facebook and Instagram, it's I figured it was good to kind of take a look at some of them. These I just pulled at random to, to find some examples. Um, so you can see here, and this, this first one is for uh, Heinz ketchup or whatever, or any of their sauces potentially. But it's now it's demonstrating, you know, three different places, three different types of food that you can use it on, right? So there, I feel they might be trying to associate their product, right, across the board. Because while one person might enjoy all three of these different food items as well, uh, potentially you have three completely different audiences of people who might enjoy those particular foods. Right. Does that make sense or am I, am I crazy? <laughs> Makes sense. I was going to say, I'll take the silence as you're crazy. <laughs> this one I thought was pretty interesting. Um, and before I say anything about what I, I may have thought, like, I'd, I'd love to hear uh, feedback from anybody here. Like when you see this ad, what, what, what do you get out of it? Audience participation. Feel free Sorry, to yeah, the, of this image here. Yeah, I think it, it, this is Central Park in New York City, so it's very recognizable, at least for Americans. And it shows you your companion, like as you're running. And it, and I mean, this the iconography is so familiar with 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 the iPhone ads with the the headphones things, right? Yeah. So it makes you think, oh, maybe I should go running and maybe I should get an iPod shuffle, even though I hate them. <laughs> yeah. And um, something that I, you know, one of the things that I pull out of this as well is, um, you know, when you have this little, this device is saying that when you have, have this device with you, you can complete this whole uh, giant circle of running. And this is a big accomplishment, right? Bryce says, to me, it's showing how far you could go with it, which is, yeah, what I was getting out of it. So yeah, Max says, anyone who runs frequently recognizes the running of a track map, so good use of symbol recognition. Alexandra thought the same thing, yeah. Yeah, right, so it's like, I, th I think like you were pointing out as well, Rob, like this is your buddy, this is your running buddy that helps you go to the distance and, and accomplish. And also, you might look at it and say, uh, it might be an associative thing, 
like you were saying, Central Park and this area of Manhattan is very, very well known for a lot of people. And it has a certain, um, certain, certain imagery or certain thoughts that go with it. Some people might think of it as like a luxury or, you know, kind of like an upper class situation. Although I know through the years, certain areas of Central Park I've heard are, can be kind of dangerous. <laughs> so, but, um, in that case, that's a whole different conversation about why you probably shouldn't wear earbuds listening to loud music while you're running in Central Park. But that's more about uh, my, my self-defense training on a different day we can talk about. But anyway, uh, Alexandra is also saying the battery is going to last and you can take it anywhere. Yeah. This I thought was kind of interesting as well. Uh, and their breakdown of it is was kind of cool. So uh, first, does anybody not know what this little logo is? Or do you know what the logo is at all? Is this when it's, they were making the idea for the logo? Supposedly, yeah. Yeah. I had to think about it, but does it, do, you need, do any of you know what that is? And the, the hint is, if you don't know necessarily the lip thing, this- Don't make jack room. Yeah. So that might be it, right? So this is like the Rolling Stones logo that's been around forever. Um, so ad is from Sharpie and the whole concept right down here, it all started with a Sharpie, right? So the way they're describing it is like, you know, with a Sharpie and the creative process, you can create this like lasting icon that spans generations. So why not use a Sharpie when you're creating stuff for your, your own brand or your own company or your own art? This was an interesting one. What do you, so from Expedia Travel Company, and uh, what, what do you get when you go on vacation? It's kind of the direction they want you to think and they want you to buy your vacation through them. This one was uh, fun. Um, <laughs> so, and I already read through it as well. And what I didn't know is according to, according to what this tells us is that uh, Burger King holds the record or like the most uh, rest, rest, most restaurants burnt down throughout its history. But at the same time, it shows their dedication to continue using the flame broilers to make good food for you, right? So they're willing to put themselves and their restaurants at risk to deliver you a higher quality fast food hamburger. I don't know, that's one way you can look at it. Uh, Max got a comment. I saw a similar neat ad, which I currently have in my desk for a pack of gum that says 15 opportunities to connect, encouraging you to share and talk to others about it. Uh, actually, I saw a similar neat one. Yep. Do you have that? You say you have it in your desk as in something you can show? Uh, 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 magic. <laughs> Okay, so it's probably super hard to see, but you know, so on the inside flap of the gum, and so now what I'm thinking about, so it's like Mac pointed out here, 15 sticks of gum, 15 opportunities to connect. Share how, oh yeah, share how you, uh, hashtag give extra, get extra. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool little thing. So this, this little ad, again, it's, it's tough to see, but it's, it's got a little image of tons of different types of people all being all coming together over this one type of gum, right? So they're encouraging kind of a community aspect. This one didn't really hit me, this Adidas one. I, it's cool because it spans both pages of the magazine, but other, other than that, besides it's, you know, when you wear Adidas, you can exercise and be fit and young. <laughs> But does that not play into some of those 10 reasons that people buy stuff, right? It's like a car ad, yeah. Speaking of another, car ads. Uh, another bonus to that ad, I, I don't know if it's intentional. You like mm -hmm. make the person work out by like folding the pages. <laughs> I don't know if that's like what the ad is supposed to be. Like you're supposed to make them do crunches. Carl says yeah. it moves when you fold it. <laughs> I, I guess that could be if you're, yeah. Interesting. I didn't even think about that one. 
So this was uh, an interesting one as well. So as you can see, it says uh, on the bottom corner, precision parking, park assist by Volkswagen. So, you know, by using their technology, you can park so precisely that, uh, you know, you can put your porcupine in between your bags of goldfish here, right? So you can, you can get your vehicle in around all this other potential precious cargo and uh, everything stays safe and it works, belongs, right? So uh, interesting one for sure. And that could play partially into, it definitely avoids the pain of like, you know, wrecking your car or wrecking somebody else's car. <laughs> could also go into a little bit, a bit of the, like the validation that you want other people to see you a certain way. You want them to see you as having like the cool, like top level technology that allows you to do things that other people, you know, struggle with. And as far as struggling, it means that you take away the pain of the common practice of, you know, in this case, looks like parallel parking. So a lot of, a lot of different things going on. Uh, this I had to read about because I didn't know what the hell a Faber Castle was, you know, but as we read in every pencil, there's an idea waiting to be discovered. So I don't know if this little cartoon image is, is like a famous cartoon image or anything like a, some Pixar character or whatever, or if it's just the fact that you start animation with a simple pencil drawing. So this one I thought was super cool. Right, so discover the full story. Uh, it's an ad for like a history museum or something. Museum of architecture, right? Uh, also plays off the concept of like the tip of the iceberg aspect. And uh, this is probably, this is actually probably an ad that uh, Brad and his Photoshop team would appreciate the way it's put together. So showing a, a deep, you know, the fact that there's, there's things that are much deeper and more complex than what you see on the surface. And that there's a whole vast, uh, piece of understanding to something that uh, you may just normally walk past. I don't know, there's some of the things that I got out of it. Mac has another comment down here. For the pencil one, the light shining down from the platform looks like the tip of the pencil showing how the story and every pencil sort of thing. All right, that's, that's a cool uh, thought process. I totally missed that aspect, but you're right. It does look like the tip of a pencil now that you say it, totally. A lot of the image, Rob says, a lot of the image catch attention, but you have to look at it closer to understand what the ad is for. Is that intentional? It probably is. I would imagine that these things are intentionally done that way. Um, but it's also, right, this is part of interesting part of advertising a copy that sometimes doesn't get talked about enough, which is like you want to attract the right audience and you want to repel the wrong audience. Right? So like we kind of skipped over this little ad with the cat chasing the gazelle, but you know, a dog owner might see, it might get, catch the attention of the dog owner, right? But they don't care about the cat and the gazelle and they keep going. But if you're a cat owner, you might, you, you grab your attention and you grab, you know, take that second look to see deeper what's going on. You know, I had some others as well here. Let's look at the second group. Oop. So you can see they got they have the same Volkswagen ad. Whoa, 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 whoa. So ASIC shoes. I, I thought this one was interesting. Again, probably a good ad, image ad for uh, for Brad and his team to take a look at for the uh, the quality of designing the image. But you know, A6, it's got Hollywood. I'm assuming this is all California here. So it's kind of uh, placing itself in that. They're LA landmarks. Okay, there you go. Rob's an LA guy. It says here, this is, is the, this company sponsored the LA Marathon. So it's the Dodger Stadium, downtown, Hollywood sign, Capitol Records building, down to the beach. Perfect. But it's, uh, so an, one underlying message could be that, you know, this, particular shoe right can help you 
complete the marathon, it helps you traverse this whole region. That's, that's one way you could potentially look at it. But that one was interesting too for the noise canceling headphones. Gives you a, a nice sense of what's happening, right? Crazy world around you and uh, you just want a little peace and quiet, right? So you're escaping pain and finding, uh, so it's more of a, I would say this is like that safety and security one. Trump versus North Korea, yeah. <laughs> There's this one again. So this is, uh, I thought, uh, an interesting one that it says down in the corner, if you can see it, it says, you eat what they eat. And I believe this is just discussing like, you know, keeping the he planet healthy and not polluting things. Uh, so the fish looks like a plastic bottle, right? And so this fits into a uh, similar to the next one that we'll, we'll talk about, right? Is that purpose-driven business? How, do, how does the business want the world to see them and how do they want to uh, fit into the world, right? So the, having those purposes is, can be very helpful. And I think especially in our new, more modern timeframe, there is a greater desire for the businesses that people buy from to have some sort of mission or purpose larger than just selling products. Which potentially could be I'm thinking about, say, like Dr. Berg and Frank, they, they, you could say, or you could make the argument that they have that just by way of the way they give so much free education, right? So like their purpose is, is greater than just selling the products. They're out, it, it could be argued that their purpose is to make a healthier world that lasts longer. And a side, or, um, a side effect of that is the fact that they just happen to also sell products that can help you accomplish that. Um, so therefore people see the, the, the greater purpose and want to be associated with that themselves. Again, that falls, goes back to the validation thing. So you have the one side of the, the coin where the people or the business has this greater purpose and you want other people who want to be associated with that business because of the purpose, because they're looking for a validation from uh, either themselves internally or from other people that they want to be associated with. Whew, stuff's deep. <laughs> I thought this one was um, fun. So flexible band-aids, so powerful that even the Hulk can use them and it won't rip, right? This must be what his shorts are made of. Um, but yeah, I just, I just thought that was kind of a, a cute example of that. This is a good one showing, uh, uh, yeah, Rob says it's ties into pop culture as well, yeah. And I don't, it didn't say, I don't think where that ad is run, you know? Uh, I mean, I don't know if they're running this ad across like all sorts of magazines or maybe specific ones. Like I could see this being in like a, like a parenting magazine or something like that, or maybe even a, a children's magazine or something. This one from Gold's Gym I was gonna talk about, I think is a very interesting way to show the sort of the before and after, but more than that, it's, it's really like the whole transformation of the piece. Jay's got some comments here. I just remember on my previous agency, when they create image and videos, they spend hours just planning it out. Every single element matters and that there should be purpose behind the little details. Yeah, they review and audit each creative on a marketing standpoint and each image our video costs hundreds to thousands of dollars to make. Yeah, totally, totally get that. Life makes wrinkles. <laughs> so the uh, associated with what I'm getting out of it, you guys feel free to hop in and let me know. So this would clearly be either a father, a grandfather, or somebody that deals with young children and the, the interesting aspects of the kids and what they do with life uh, all day long can uh, tend to wear on your nerves occasionally uh, and makes you frown sometimes and uh, produces wrinkles, right? So 
now the the Nivea comes along. I assume they're helping. They're claiming that uh, their stuff helps. I don't know, keep your skin supple or whatever, so you have less wrinkles, maybe, which plays into uh, could be again. It could cross a couple of different ones, right? But it's it's the gaining uh, greater health or, or longevity wants you to feel young again. So to clean up some of these things, that's some of the basics. Uh, things I thought about from that one. And this last one, which apparently we didn't connect correctly. It's all right, I think I have it over here. Patagonia says, don't buy this jacket. Now, pretty attention grabbing. Why didn't they want me to buy their jacket, you know? <laughs> Uh, but as you get down a little bit further into the, the ad itself, so reduce, repair, reuse, recycle, reimagine, they're, they're giving you some, some concepts, some ideas. So again, this is a, a good one to talk about the purpose, right? And as you read some of the, the smaller copy here, which is a little bit hard to see, it talks about this particular ad is talking about, hey, it's Black Friday. On Black Friday, people go crazy and they buy all sorts of stuff. They buy, 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 buy. But Patagonia says, you know, we don't, we want you to actually buy less. We want you to think about what you're buying. We want you to think about the potential impact that it has on the earth and the, the population around you, because Patagonia wants to be a, a company that's known for sustainability and, uh, you know, long life and health and, and such things. So they, they do want you to buy their jacket, but uh, one of these others down here, here, don't buy the shirt unless you need it. So it's an interesting twist on getting someone to buy your stuff by telling them not to do it. So, but again, they have a greater purpose and then people like to be associated with that greater purpose for their own validation and other desires or other wants and needs. So therefore they're like, oh, I can really identify with what they're talking about. And therefore Patagonia is my go-to brand for stuff. I'm going to leave it at that. We're at about 34 minutes. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And quick question, because I, um, I know you kind of told me your strategy, and I also was uh, messing with, with Mac to see what his strategy is. When you guys are planning out, do you try to hit those all of those 10 points? Because I, I, so Matt kind of said that he he usually hits a couple points specifically that he finds works, and obviously yeah. different audiences, you're not going to sell weight. You know, some of those ten points won't apply to all brands. Yeah. <clears throat> um, no, I I don't I don't think you really can hit all ten, mm -hmm. uh, and it's probably better from at least from a testing standpoint to think about it in a more singular or only one or two at a time. That makes sense. Now, if have you, you have done something like Monday is emotion day and Tuesday is status day and Wednesday is. I haven't particularly uh, done something like that. Yeah, yeah, that could be interesting. And that would be an interesting piece to think about for organic content. Mm. You know, uh, I know that's a thing that a lot of people have done where each day of the week will be for a specific like type of content or. Mm. So if, if you were to lay it out in that manner, it could be interesting. Money saving Mondays, you know, terrific Tuesdays or whatever. But you could figure out a way to kind of touch on uh, multiple emotions throughout the week or multiple reasons that people would buy or don't buy. So uh, one of the interesting concepts that uh, I'll, I can give you a quick, uh, quick peek. This is from the, the same guy who inspired us. So the, these four um, emotions have counterparts, right? Validation versus shame, excitement versus boredom, security versus fear, and purpose versus futility. So that, that gives you another dimension or realm to play with the, the testing and, and see what things work best. So you can do the high and the low end. Yeah. Bored, do this. Want yeah. excitement, do this. And it's the same yeah. button, but just top end, low end. Yeah. Interesting. 
And then instead of um, testing like emotion versus emotion, you could test like the positive emotion versus the negative emotion and see what thing triggers people the most. There are a lot of people that will, uh, Jay raised his hand. We got to get Jay's comment here before the time runs out. There's a lot of people that will rather move away from pain than move toward comfort. Jay, what do you got? Uh, do you guys know Nas Daily? Are you familiar with the content creator Nas Daily? Is that it? I don't know offhand, no. Nas Daily. Uh, okay, so he's a, he's a content creator, been, a while, been, been in the market for a while. And uh, he said, uh, one of in her, uh, his interviews said, um, so he was asked, like, how do you make content? How do you make content viral? It's, most of his content are viral. He, he does like one minute videos of different types of content all around the world. And he was asked, like, how do you make content viral? And his answer was, don't be boring, be controversial. So is that, uh, you know, that part, something that we also take into consideration when we create this uh, copies and content? Yeah, you totally could. Uh, part of it, that's, that's gonna depend on the, um, the brand and who's in charge of the brand and what they want to be known for and what they don't want to be known for. If they're okay with having some controversy or contrary thoughts and, and stuff, then it's a great way to uh, great, great way to go and great way to get viral attention for sure. Yeah. So uh, less than a minute left. So if you have other comments or questions, folks, just send them to me via like email or ring central and I'll do my best to get to them. Uh, besides that, Hope you guys had a great time and take something away from it. Um, Bryce, you're welcome. In fact, if you guys would do me a favor, it would be great. If you took like a minute or two to just jot down, like what are some takeaways you've got from not just this class, but what are some, some, some of the classes, uh, these training classes that you guys have come to? Just a couple of 